from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Rejoice and be glad, two elderly women in scripture, Manoah's wife and Elizabeth, who were unable to conceive a child and were therefore looked down upon in their ancient society as shameful and unworthy. Likewise, many in our daily TV mass community feel less than adequate. Rejoice, since no matter what our life story and disappointments are, Jesus says that you are special in God's eyes for he said in Matthew 5, Blessed are you when people persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Together, let us pray. Lord, may we come to accept our personal sufferings and trust that real joy is found deep in our heart and not in what secular society calls joy. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Roshan Lloyd de Souza, CSC. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from an anonymous donor from Victoria, British Columbia. This Mass is offered for the living and deceased members of her family, for world peace, and in thanksgiving for the Daily TV Mass. We know that this television mass brings meaning to the lives of tens of thousands of Canadians across our land and all over the world. And they join with me in thanking our donor for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, today's readings help us to know that prayer is a great blessing. And we are promised that Heavenly Father is always listening. But often, it takes some work from our part to recognize His answers. As we enter into this banquet, let us ask the Lord to deepen our trust in the divine providence. Let us seek God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the childbearing of the Holy Virgin graciously revealed the radiance of your glory to the world, grant, we pray, that we may venerate with integrity of faith the mystery of so wondrous an incarnation and always celebrate it with due reverence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. There was a certain man of Zorah, of the tribe of Dan, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren, having borne no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Although you are barren, having borne no children, you shall conceive and bear a son. Now be careful not to drink wine or strong drink, or to eat anything unclean, for you, you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor is to come on his head, for the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth. It is he who shall begin to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, a man of God came to me, and his appearance was like that of an angel of God, most awe-inspiring. I did not ask him where he came from, and he did not tell me his name, but he said to me, you shall conceive and bear a son. 
So then drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth to the day of his death. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew, and the Lord blessed him. The Spirit of the Lord began to stir him. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once when Zechariah was serving as priest before God, and his section was on duty, he was chosen by Lord 
according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now, at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn away many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? for I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you do not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months he remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me, when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do faithful Christians are often bored and tired with what seems like the unchangeability of our lives and circumstances? The Gospel before us is a reminder that every day faithfulness matters, and it matters much more in this time and period. In what could seemingly be the dull routine of the ordinary, God shows up and lives are changed forever. This is particularly relevant when this gospel has the feel of a First Testament story that reads, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. This story has that kind of feel to it as God is, the, is beginning again. Secondly, Zechariah is astonished when his prayers are answered, but perhaps his variety of persistent prayer is what is needed. This suggests that seemingly hopeless prayers for recovery healing, and even pregnancies are not out of place. Thirdly, Israel had prayed its heart out and nothing happened. They had waited for a sign of the coming of Messiah to change their circumstances. Circumstances that were not only beyond their control, 
but much larger than they imag imagined were repairable. God's Spirit is hovering and speaking over places that are dead or dying and speaking a new word. The news promises that even before he is born, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is unbelievable, but that is the way God moves. And when he does, that movement stares, silences, and mobilizes. It removes shame and disgrace and replaces these with wonder and blessing. God's interruptions fill emptiness with hope and promise where there is none. Only God could do that. Luke presents the Christmas story by announcing both the births of John the Baptist as well as Jesus. Luke is the only gospel writer who recounts the birth of John the Baptist. He places the two babies side by side so you will compare them closely. Again, Luke wants, to, wants the reader to compare the contrast between Jesus and John the Baptist. Both children are announced by Angel Gabriel. Both births are miraculous. Now, the question is, did Zechariah sin by asking for a sign? Is it wrong to ask God for a sign? Not in every case. If we turn to the pages of the Old Testament, we read, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, as the sign of the Lord your God, let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that to weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. All signs happen when we have deepest faith in the divine providence. Let us deepen our faith in this time to prepare to welcome our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us bring before the Lord all our prayers. Let us pray for the church, for our nation, and for all the leaders, that they may be guided by the gift of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. Heavenly Father, we offer our community prayer for all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book. During this Advent season, we ask our Blessed Mother to intercede with her Son on behalf of those searching for hope, joy, and love as we prepare for the coming of Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, help us prepare to celebrate Christmas by contemplating Mary and Joseph. Mary, the woman of full of grace, Joseph, the faithful and just man. They chose to be filled with hope, joy, and love, rather than listen to the voices of doubt and human pride. With them, let us walk together toward Bethlehem. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all us in the church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we lay upon our altars, that what we bring, despite our weakness, may be sanctified by your power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, all the religious and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallow be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we give thanks, Almighty God, for these gifts you have bestowed, graciously arouse in us, we pray, the desire for those yet to come, that we may welcome the nativity of our Savior and honor it with minds made pure, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go to share the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for prayers are included in our Prayer Intentions book and shared with all of our celebrants.